Welcome back! In this video, we'll explore integrating ads using Unity Level Play. We'll set up rewarded ads since at this point in the series we have a foundation for economy resources and the players who have them. Rewarded ads are, of course, optional ads where players can earn in game rewards like coins or items. Since we're granting rewards, we'll again be using cloud code for server side validation and reward granting to ensure that bad actors can't cheat the system. In the series so far, we've kind of charged right into making things, getting into the details and explanations along the way. However, in this case, it's helpful to have an understanding of what level play is before we start in. If you already have a handle on how ad mediation works in typical free to play games or apps, feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter. Level Play is an ad mediation platform. Think of ad mediation as like a real estate agent or auctioneer for your app's ad space. Instead of you having to contact every ad network individually, Level Play shows your ad spots to all networks and automatically gets you the highest offer, just like an auction. With Level Play, we use a single SDK integration to manage and optimize these multiple ad networks. After we install the ads mediation package in the future and go up to ads mediation network manager, we can see that the level play SDK bundles the mediation with iron source ads and unity ads. And then below you see all the other networks, but here's where it gets a bit confusing. Unity ads and iron source ads are individual ad networks like Google ad mob or meta. Unity Level Play, the mediation platform, manages all these networks, including Unity's own ad network. To reiterate then, Level Play can show ads from Unity ads and Iron Source ads. They're not the same thing. They're separate ad networks along with Google AdMob, Meta, Amazon Publisher Services, and many others, all of which compete in the auction process. Set each of these up and Level Play will auction your ad space off to whoever pays the most for each impression. All right, let's set up Level Play and install the ads mediation package. Go to your project in the cloud dashboard, click on shortcuts and select Unity Level Play at the bottom, or you can type it in the search like a sane person. We're in the midst of some changes, so if Level Play isn't in the shortcuts, you can find it by clicking on products and search for it in the products page, and then you can launch it from there. Click sign in and you'll be given the option to connect your Unity account or create an account. The sign-in flow will change, but as of this date, if it's your first time signing in, you'll automatically be in the app creation screen. So hang out for a moment and let me get there too. From Level Play, I'll go to apps. I have Gem Hunter and our tutorial app here. You'll need to go up to add app. And then there's some info to fill out. If you're building along with me, put that the app is not live in the application store. Fill out the name and the platform. I'm gonna go back in time to when I added the tutorial app. All right, then click add app. And then you'll get a screen where you can toggle add units. You might as well add all of them. I'm gonna just toggle rewarded video. And I should say this flow is likely to change. Future people may see something different here. Once you do that, you'll automatically be taken to add units. Well, the future happens, so I'm editing this in. Currently, when you make an app, you get taken to an empty add units screen. Click create add unit, and then you'll see how to fill this out in a moment. The Level Play team is working to streamline the setup process, so it's better to keep these edits in because the video is going to be relevant in the midst of these changes. Ad units are specific configurations of ad formats, and they define the monetization settings, rewards, and display parameters for ads in your app. Hovering over the networks for rewarded, I see that one ad network has been added for rewarded ads and its iron source. Fast forward in time though, and now I have two ad networks, I since set up and added Unity Ads. If you're watching a few months from now, you may see that Unity Ads was automatically added in the initial setup flow. I'm showing this now because it helps us understand what we're looking at. Click on Rewarded to check out the settings of the ad unit. Change your reward item name to the ID of the resource. I'm doing gold. I suggest you do a currency for now so our code will match. I'm gonna change the reward amount to 50. In advanced settings, we have some capping and pacing settings for the limits on the number of ad impressions and the timing of how often ads change. The distinction between capping and pacing is that capping limits the number of ads you serve and pacing limits the time interval between ads. Let's set the capping to something generous for now, like 30 per day. We can just get things to work first and then come back and test the limits. You can also do per hour, but we'll do per day for now. Go ahead and click save. For now, let's skip over instances and networks and go right to placements. And I have a little test placement here. Go to create placement in the top right. And then for ad format, select rewarded. Okay, with this up, let's talk about what placements are. 
Placements are placements of ad units. They enable you to control where and how the ad units are served within your app, like the end of the level, in the store, etc. Placement configurations include a reward that will be used instead of the ad unit reward. An ad unit might be, this rewarded video gives 50 gold by default. But for the placement, when this ad unit is shown in a placement on the game over screen, give an extra life instead. So that makes a lot of sense for rewarded ads, but what about the others? For interstitial ads, placements are important for adjusting the capping of how often players see ads. You can adjust them to where it feels fair and not after every single level or something. And then for banner ads, placements are useful just for reporting. Uh, the last one is advanced, but we might as well complete the list. Native ads are meant to blend in like most ads in our timeline or social media. For games, I can't help but think of something diegetic like an in-game billboard. Let's get back to creating our placement. For the name, we have some predetermined names in the dropdown here. Let's do main menu. The reward will be gold. And then let's make the reward be 100 gold so we know the placement is working distinct from the add unit. I'll make the capping be the same as the add unit. When you have different settings between unit and placement, the more restrictive one is chosen. Now let's head over to Unity to the package manager and services and then install the ads mediation package. Also in samples, import the Unity level play sample as another example to check out. We'll be building ours from scratch, but definitely check out the sample because there will be updates. Create a new script called something like rewarded ads manager and open it up. At the top, we define platform specific app keys. The app keys identify your app to the ad networks. It's on the apps page of the level play dashboard just under the app name. And while you're there, you can also bring over the ad unit ID and the placement name for the ad. Then we're gonna do a simple cooldown on ad completion. Say a user wants to get all the ad rewards they can up to the cap we set. If we do a short cooldown, we can give a little time to queue up the next ad and re-enable the watch ad button. Let's track if the level play SDK has been initialized, and then we have the actual rewarded ad object from the level play SDK. Then we can store the last generated token to easily prevent duplicate usage, we have a couple of events for successful completion. In addition to the bool, we should eventually pass the reward to give a notification to the player. We also have an add available event, which can be used to toggle buttons or disable things if there's no network connection. Let's take a look at the initialization. We're going to wait for player authentication since we'll be using the player ID in the level play initialization in order to have good tracking data. We only initialize ads after the player is signed in. Just in case we miss the sign-in event, which is likely to happen if you move this code into another menu or a scene away from where the sign-in would be triggered, we can directly check if the player is signed in, and if level play is not initialized, we can just call initialize ads. We then get the correct app key for Android or iOS. We initialize level play with the app key and the user ID. I'm also including level play set pause game to true, which means that the game will be paused when there's an ad and things will resume automatically when the ad is closed. This should be called once a session, so we're doing it here. The test suite enables us to set and test our app's integration and review the platform setup and ads related to our configured networks. To use the test suite, we need to enable is test suite with set metadata before initializing. Note that later when I test on device, I'm not using this test suite. After the SDK is initialized, we set the initialize flag, log a message, and create a rewarded ad object, register for events, and load the rewarded ad. When we create the ad, we send the ad unit ID. We'll send the placement ID when we show the ad. Level play rewarded ad provides many events we can subscribe to. I'm subscribing to all of them. Not all the methods do much, but this way we can see what's available. Most of our logic is in process ad reward. Moving on, when the player presses the watch ad button, the button calls the click show ad reward method. The method performs availability checks before attempting to show the ad. Show rewarded ad handles whether we're showing a placement or a basic ad unit. If no placement is configured, we can just call show ad, and we call show ad with a placement name if we have one. Moving down, let's look at can show ad. Can show ad verifies all necessary conditions that the SDK is initialized, the ad object is created, the ad is ready, and whether we're under the placement capping. The countdown is straightforward. Our get remaining cooldown seconds can be used for a countdown timer to give some wiggle room to load the next ad if you want to allow players to earn ad rewards back to back. And now our event callbacks. Handle ad loaded successfully, we have a log and we could fire off the event to enable the watch ad button or 
any other notification, an ad is available. In Handle Ad Load Failed, we have some retry strategies based on specific level play error codes. As an example, I included the Add Available event for the error code for placement having reached its cap or limit. Note that some error codes are specific to certain ad formats, so check the level play documentation on this because all of these apply to rewarded videos, but might not apply to some others. For Handle Ad Display, I don't really have anything for this, just showing that it's available. If you didn't want to pause the game for some reason, you probably want to have an event here for turning off the music or sound effects. For Add Fail to Display, we'll use our Add Successfully Completed event with False. On Add Rewarded, we process Add Reward, and this is where we have logic for validation and reward granting. For now, you can ignore this highlighted block here and just do a successful reward granted log. Let's get things working first, and then we can come back and talk through the validation token we're creating and how we're using it in Cloud Code to prevent cheating before we grant rewards server-side. For now, let's just move on to the rest of the event callbacks. We're just doing some simple logging, so pause if you want to copy it. I'm going to move on. All that we have left to do at this point is event handler cleanup in on destroy. All right, let's go back into the editor, put rewarded ads manager on an object in your scene, and drag in the economy manager for it to handle the economy update. And then your button click should be calling click show ad reward. And remember that we've set up rewarded ads to require an authenticated player, so if you get an error related to that, you just need to bring back your login buttons to sign in anonymously again. At this point in the series, you're probably an authenticated player unless you've deleted the player in the dashboard. After pressing start, I see I'm a returning player. So let's try it out. And there we go. And we get logs for the ad rewards. From here, let's return to the rewarded ad manager to process ad reward, and let's tackle the anti-cheating token, and then from there handle the validation and reward granting in Cloud Code. You could handle reward granting on the client side here, and that's fine for an immediate optimistic update. But like depositing a check without any bank security, rights are dangerous because a hacker could just erase the amount and put a million dollars. As we've said earlier, Cloud Code is our impenetrable fortress in another dimension. So we'll send the add info and reward to a generate add token method, and we'll use this token in a Cloud Code function called handle grant video add reward for validation. We only grant the reward if the server confirms it's legitimate from the token, and that token is pretty simple and worth checking out just to see what info we can get from level play add info and level play reward. As we've done before, we're returning fresh economy data, which means we will call the handle economy update in the economy manager and send the economy data along for everything else to update. You'll probably want to comment out this cloud code function since it doesn't exist yet. In generate add token, we create a JSON token containing the timestamp, add information, and reward data. This is hard coded to gold, so for now, our editor testing works. To be clear, this token isn't cryptographically secure and could be reverse engineered. The real protection happens server-side in Cloud Code, where we'll use this token information for 10-second rate limiting between rewards, duplicate token prevention, timing validation, and hard caps on reward amounts. The effort to reward ratio makes it not worth it, and it's only taking us a couple minutes to implement a practical level of protection. Open up your Cloud Code solution, and let's now implement the Cloud Code side. Create a new class in your Cloud Code solution called Add Reward Service. And it's here that we'll implement the Cloud Code function called handle grant video add reward. First, inside add reward service, let's create a parse token data class to hold the extracted data from our add token, which we'll validate before granting a reward. At the top of the script, we have token validation constants. And then we define the constructor to inject services we'll need. We'll use the player data service for saving the previous add token and the economy service for granting the reward. In the module config, you'll need to call add singleton passing player data service as the type parameter. This registers it with Unity's dependency injection system, which tells Cloud Code to create one shared instance of player data service and reuse it whenever it's needed. And now handle grant video reward. This is our Cloud Code function, and we first parse the raw token string into a structured object. Then we validate the token contents and validate the token usage where we have a similar check on timing as our previous cooldown, and we're checking the last used token, which we've saved. And last, we grant the reward using our economy service class. Let's check out parse token, and we'll go through these methods pretty quick. The add token is JSON format, so we deserialize it using Newtonsoft's JSON convert into our parsed token data object. 
If deserialization fails, we catch the exception and throw an unauthorized access exception. And now let's move on to our method for validating the token data using a few rules, like is the reward gold, and is the amount greater than a max that we set. Even if somebody figures out the token, there's a max on what they can get out of it. An important note here, throughout the series we've had detailed exception messages for learning purposes, but in production you'd want to keep those messages vague. Instead, log the details via the Cloud Code Logger. Otherwise, you're revealing your validation logic to anyone inspecting the error responses. It's a bit like saying, oh, that's not the password because the password starts with a J. It's better to just have the message be vague like token invalid. Let's move on to our duplicate token check. Validate token usage has a check against the previous token and a check that a reasonable amount of time has elapsed before the last reward. We're not saving all add tokens, but we are saving the last one because that prevents someone from calling this cloud code function with the same add token over and over. By the way, you probably need to make a couple of these player data service methods public at this point. In has token been used, we're just checking to see if the current add token matches the previous one. And then quickly, here's our check on the add reward interval time. And last, we have a very small method for storing the last add token. Just wanted to make this really clear in the code. And actually, one more little thing. Um, go back into your player data service to the save data method. CloudSafe will serialize our JSON string correctly when passed as an object. But for clarity, let's add a save data overload. You can just copy and paste it. That takes a string parameter instead. That makes our intention explicit. We're storing a preformatted JSON string, not an object that needs serialization. Before heading back into Unity, build your solution and check that it builds successfully. And then back in the editor, you know the routine by now. Generate your bindings again and deploy your module. At this point, head back to the dashboard to set up your test devices, which you can use to test specific networks. Test devices is in setup, below placements, and direct deals. I already have a few devices here. I'll use my Galaxy 22 with iron source bidding, and I'll just test rewarded. Adding a device is pretty easy. Just give the device a name, and then to find the advertising ID, you can follow this link, but I'll just tell you now how to do it. Build and run to your device with development build toggled, because when we call validate integration, which we have in our rewarded ads manager, we get our phone's ad ID at the end of a status report on the integration of all the ad networks. Look at your console logs from Xcode or Android Logcat like I have here. This is the tail end of the log of the status of all the ad networks. And there's the device's advertising ID. You can also, of course, search for GAID or AID. The easiest way to transfer this is to right click and copy the log, paste it to a notepad document, and then you can copy paste over just the ID. All right, once that's configured, build and run your app again switching to my galaxy. And notice that I have the starting amount of gold and health potions, so we have a new player initialized and authenticated. Click anonymous sign in if you aren't seeing any gold or health potions. Now I'll click watch ad. And we get an ad demo from the iron source ad network. What happens here depends on the ad network you have configured. So I'll close out of that. And now we have 200 gold, which means we've received our ad reward from the main menu placement. All right, everything's working. The player gets something for the game, and you, the dev, are making money. And what better note to end this series on? We've plowed our way through lots of documentation. We've integrated most of the Unity gaming services into a starting foundation. And that this doesn't look like much is by design, because now you can focus on more of the fun stuff to do. I must note again that everything in this series is only half of the work we've done. The other half is Gem Hunter UGS, where we've built upon everything we've covered here and shaped it into a fully featured metagame example. If you've come this far, you're more than ready to check that out. If you have any questions, let us know at the discussion post link. Thanks so much for watching.